the Back to Space News Flash. Stay tuned because in a little bit we are going to announce the winner of last week's giveaway and also announce the new exciting prize of this week. So without further ado, let's get started. News from the NASA Mars Mole! Guys, it was doing so well! And then on Monday, the mole popped out of its hole. This has been a whole ordeal. Get the joke? A whole ordeal. <laughs> This has been a whole ordeal over the past couple of months. We've been talking about it a lot, but we thought we were in the clear. God, there's been just so much drama. So now it's backed out about halfway of its burrow. A preliminary assessments point to the unusual soil conditions on the red planet. The international mission team is developing the next stages to get it buried again. NASA officials wrote this in an update earlier this week. They also mentioned the next step is determining how safe it is to move InSight's robotic arm away from the mole to better assess the situation. The team is going to huddle together and try to think of another way to get this mole moving. But in other news, the Associate Administrator for NASA Science Mission Directorate wanted to make sure that everyone is not just focusing on the negatives. He stated, and I quote, Remember that even though the international team will continue to do their best to get this mole into the ground, the mole working is not a so-called level one for mission success. So let's pray to the robotic mole gods that this will solve itself. Moving on. Tis the season to be scary. Wait, is that? That's the wrong holiday. It's a season to be scary, guys. NASA just released a series of Halloween-themed posters showcasing the different exoplanets called Galaxy of Whores. These are cute posters that have a vintage horror movie feel, but instead of promoting slasher movies, they promote exoplanets. The posters are the latest in NASA's efforts to better educate the public on exoplanets in a creative way and their collaboration between scientists and artists. Just so we're all on the same page, all of the planets in our solar system orbit around the sun. Planets that orbit around other stars are called, say it with me now, exoplanets. Yeah! They're hard to see directly with the telescope because they are hidden by the bright glare of the stars they orbit. One might say they're not extraplanets, but introplanets. Get it? Like extroverts and introverts? <laughs> Guys, these posters are free to download, so just do it. Everyone loves free stuff. After 780 days in orbit, the US Air Force X-37B space plane landed last Sunday. This was the longest mission of the mysterious military test program. So, I'll go into a little bit more specifics about this particular test in a second, but just as some background, the X-37 began as a NASA project in 1999, then was transferred to the U.S. Department of Defense in 2004. This unmanned plane is the fifth X-37B to be sent into orbit, with each plane staying in orbit longer than the last. And for those of you who are like, oh, 780 days in Orbit? That's like nothing. FYI, that was Sunday, September 10th, 2017. It's 2019. The uncrewed plane, which looks like a small space shuttle, conducted in-orbit experiments that could then be brought back to Earth for examination, according to the Air Force. The exact details of the experiment are so closely guarded. Why is that plane so big? Because it's full of secrets. In a statement, the Air Force only revealed that the program performs risk reduction, experimentation, and concept of operations development for reusable space vehicle technologies. CNN reported that the Air Force has provided some hints about its program. Hints. In a press release Sunday, it said the latest X-37B mission conducted experiments for the Air Force Research Laboratory, AFRL. The AFRL develops warfighting technologies for the air, space, and cyberspace sectors according to his website, for instance, is developing laser weapons that could eventually maybe be mounted onto aircraft. So I guess we just have to applaud the successful flight and then wait for the time to come when the apocalypse happens and this plane has a back. And in case anyone asks, you didn't hear any of this from me because I just broke the first rule about talking about secret planes. You don't talk about secret planes. The past! October 31st is Michael Collins' birthday. Happy birthday to you. 
For those of you who don't know, Michael Collins flew on Gemini 10 and was the man orbiting the moon on Apollo 11 while Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin got to walk on the moon. Or more like a bunny hop. Anyways, happy spooky birthday, Michael Collins. Before we jump into the future, why don't we do the moment that you've all been waiting for, the winner of last week's giveaway. Sweet Story Bro won. Sweet story, bruh. You won the giveaway. That's a pretty sweet story, bro. <laughs> Just to reiterate, you won an amazing, unique, autographed photo of Apollo 16 moonwalker Charlie Duke. Congratulations. So for this week's giveaway, we have a Look at this, for the sun in November, we're all gonna need it. Check it out, check it out, check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. To win this beautiful thing, make sure that you leave a comment on this video. You are a subscriber of this channel and you check back in next week to see if you were the lucky winner. The future. The insight has been in the news a lot with us lately, but now there's a new Mars rover in town scheduled for 2020. And this rover has shed its skin, end quote, and gained an arm. Thank God that's not how humans work. Anywho, after the rover relocated from the spacecraft assembly facility to the simulator building at JPL to undergo testing, engineers removed the first inner layer of the protective anti-static foil on the rover to prevent contamination on Mars. In this GIF, GIF? GIF? You can see a team of engineers in bunny suits unwrapping the rover. The Mars 2020 rover will be collecting samples for future return to Earth. So it must meet extraordinary cleanliness measures to avoid the possibility of contaminating Martian samples with terrestrial contaminants. Paul Boder, a contamination control lead for the Mars 2020 rover at JPL said, to ensure we maintain cleanliness at all times, we need to keep things clean, not only during the assembly and testing, but also during the moves between buildings for these activities. Also, can we just chat about this arm? So they're doing a lot of updates for this rover, but the arm is pretty dang cool, and it's called the SHA, which stands for Sample Handling Assembly. The SHA is designed to assess, store, and release rock and soil samples collected by the rover on the surface of Mars. The sixth robotic arm from the Maxer that will be used on Mars, the SHA will be an important asset for the rover's goal of answering questions about the potential existence now or in the past of life on Mars. Get excited, we're gonna get some answers. The crucial flight test of SpaceX's new Crew Dragon astronaut taxi could happen this upcoming month. SpaceX recently installed Crew Dragon's eight Super Draco abort engines. Is that like Draco Malfoy? Which are designed to jet the capsule away from its Falcon 9 rocket ride in the event of a launch emergency. The Super Dracos, I just imagine a bunch of Draco Malfoys just like, an army of them. The Super Dracos will strut their stuff during an uncrewed in-flight abort IFA test, which will lift off from Florida's Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and remain in Earth's atmosphere from start to finish. So we'll have to stay tuned for that one. NASA shared their details of their lunar mission last Tuesday and strap in because they're super cool. The first mission to the moon's surface, consisting of two crew members, will remain on the surface for 6.5 days. This is double the longest period of time any of the Apollo missions spent on the surface. The two astronauts will conduct up to four spacewalks on the surface of the moon, performing a variety of scientific observations, including sampling water ice. One of the big differences between the first mission and the Apollo is that NASA intends to pre-position equipment on the surface, including an unpressurized rover for astronauts to use during their spacewalks. The agency intends for this rover to have the capability to be controlled remotely. Another Artemis mission is scheduled to follow in 2025, followed by delivery of a pressurized rover as early as 2026. This would enable much longer forays from the landing site. Before the end of the decade, NASA says it could evolve the crew size to four people for 14-day missions and begin to establish facilities for mining water, ice, and producing oxygen. Wow! 
This week's researcher is an 18-year-old senior, Bella Roberts. She loves theater, dance, singing, generally being loud and obnoxious. Her words, not mine. I did not say that. And, of course, space. She has attended U.S. space camps eight times and has way too many rocket posters. She has met at least one astronaut from the Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, Apollo Soyuz, Skylab, and shuttle programs. But mostly, she loves her fellow Back to Space student ambassadors. So I actually don't believe that Blue Origin or SpaceX is going to win the new space race. I actually think it's going to be the Sierra Nevada Corporation for no other reason other than um, their dream chaser is like a little baby space shuttle and it's really cute and therefore it wins in my heart. And that's it for this week's Back to Space News Flash. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to leave a comment, be a subscriber, and tune in next week to see if you won this super awesome hat that all of y'all friends are gonna be jealous of. <laughs> oh! Vogue. I should really stop throwing that hat.